In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can highlight your values in your table. How to highlight values based on the target and how to highlight based on category. We're going to go through this step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you frequently watch my channel you know that I covered several ways that you can filter your data using a slicer visual and today I'm going to show you something a little bit different. So we're going to use the slicer pane to highlight data points in our data instead of filtering them. And first, I want to show you how you can highlight your values based on certain targets. So this is the report that we're going to use today. It's the Northwind dataset that we're using, that there are four tables here. We have the order details, which has the different orders that were made. This links to the products, which has the product names, which then links to the categories to categorize all those products. We also have an orders table, which lists out the order dates, but we're not really going to use that today. If you look at the relationships between these tables, they are fairly simplistic. So we have orders filtering in the order details, which is our fact table. We have the categories to the products and then products to the order details. So apart from the columns and fields, I've also pre-created a measure here, total sales, which simply multiplies the quantity and unit price to get the total sales for each of the orders. Now we're going to start by dragging in the products, the product names and the total sales so we can see how much, uh, what are the total sales for each individual products that we have sold. So from this table, what we want to do is we want to highlight products that sold on or above our target sales. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a target, which we actually don't have yet. So we can set the target manually or we can hook it up to a parameter so users can adjust it. So to create a parameter, you need to go to modeling, new parameter, numeric range. So we will name this one target sales, leave it as a whole number, our minimum. So let's say we have about, I mean, the, the highest seems to be 149,000. So we'll make the maximum 20,000, minimum 1,000 and increment will give it 1,000. We'll add the slicer to the page. And if we hit create, what it will do is it will add this slicer for us which I can just put here, that we can drag around all the way up to 20,000. 20, Wait, actually that needs to be 200,000. So it's missing another zero. So there we go. So we should be able to scroll that all the way to 200,000. So this will be, and the value here will serve as our target value. It adds a slicer to the page, but what it also does is it creates a calculated table with the target sales value that we've set up here, as well as a measure target sales value, which we'll use for our calculations. So now that we have these set up, now we need to hook this up to another measure to determine the highlight color of each of the rows in our table. So to do that, we're going to create a new measure. It doesn't matter where it is, new measure. And we're gonna name this one highlight target and I'm going to type here if total sales is greater than or equals to target value which is what we have selected there on our slicer so what color this would be so you can set the colors here or you can put some hexadecimal values so this one I know is green so I'm just gonna type this one then otherwise we will leave it as white. So let's see what this looks like 
on our table here. So I'm just going to drag it here. So you can see that for any products that have gone over the target sales that we have set up here in the slicer, you will see that the color will be this. And if I reduce that, let's see, yeah, you'll see more and more of them will start to get highlighted. So easiest way is if you can sort this descending, you'll see if I decrease it, more will hit that target. So now that we can see that this works, we can just simply remove the highlight target value in our table, go to format your visual, under cell elements, turn on background color. Now here, instead of using gradient or rules, we use field value. And the value that we want here is the highlight value. So if you hit OK, you will see that these columns or these products will be highlighted based on if they hit the target or not. You'll see if I increase the target, so does this change. So the products that are highlighted are also different. So if you wanted to highlight the whole row, you can also apply this to the other columns. So under cell elements, we change it to total sales, background color, and we'll change that to be based on our new measure, highlight target. If you hit OK, there we go. So now it's highlighting any of the products that have reached targets that we are aiming for. The next thing that I want to show you is how you can highlight products that belong to certain categories in a table. So if I just create a new page here, and let's bring in products and total sales again. So let's say we want a slicer categories like this. And for every selection that we want to make here, we want to highlight the products that belong to these categories. Now, currently, if you simply select categories here, as expected, what it does is it filters the context to show just those products, but hides the rest. So condiments will only show condiment products. Confections will only show confection products. But this is not what we want in this case. What we want is we want to show still all the products, but just simply highlight those that belong to these categories. So the first thing that will probably come to mind is disabling the interactions, which is simple enough, right? So you will simply just go format here, edit interactions, and then for any interaction that is happening in this slicer, you just don't, uh, uh, don't, don't get affected. So what this then does, and this is sort of what we want, is we want, as we select here, nothing changes here. However, the problem with this method is that the table doesn't know what we've selected because we've severed the link between the two visuals. So what we actually need to do, we'll just put that back to how it was. So what we need is a separate table, which we can use as a slicer so that it doesn't filter the products table. So the first thing that we will need to do is we will need to create a calculated table. So under modeling, you create new table and the table that we want to create is a copy of the categories table. So category, I can spell category filter, and then simply we're just gonna say, give me categories table. So by creating this, and if I show you how it looks like, it's basically just the categories table, like for like. So now, if we delete that, and instead of using the categories table as our slicer, we will use the category filter that we've just created. So if you change that into a filter, you'll see that as I make selections, it doesn't filter our product. So which means that now we just need to create a measure that identifies what category is selected in this table and then find out which products it is accordingly here in our products table. So the first thing that we will need to do uh, is we'll create a measure. So we will just name this one highlight 
category. And so there are two things that we need to find here. What is selected in our category slicer and what is the category in our products table. So the products, uh, the category in the products table is actually pretty simple. If we just do max uh, category name and you need to make sure that you're using the categories table here. And if I just show you how that looks like for now. So one thing here, as you'll notice, is that it's giving me seafood on all of them. And that's because it's the last value in the categories table. But actually, the reason why that's not finding the right category is that we're actually trying to filter upwards. So we're trying to get the categories based on the product. And what we actually want in this case is that for each of the products to identify what is the category of those products. Now, to do that, we need to make a change in our relationship here so that the products can filter back into the categories table. So we'll need to change the cross filter direction to both. If you hit OK, now we go back here, you'll see that it's now giving us the correct categories for each of those products. So that's the first step. The second step that we need to do is to find the selected value in our categories filter. And to do that, we will actually need to connect the categories filter to the categories table using the treat as function, which is essentially a beefed up version of the use relationship. And I actually covered this in a video a long time ago. So if you want to know more about how this function really works, go check out that video. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to type calculate and we're going to choose the selected value from our categories filter categories name here I'm going to use treat as as the filter context so treat as then we will use values categories temp category filter category name So this is how we are making the relationship. So categories values, and then category ID from the categories table. So now this gives us whatever is selected in our category filter here. So you can see that is across all of these. So now we simply need to add an if statement. So wrap this with an if statement. So if this value is equals to our category name, then we want this to be our green. So it should be 41AC4C, except instead we'll have white like this. So here we go. So you can see that it now sort of works here, as we can see in our highlight category. So any confections products will be highlighted like this. And if we change what we're selecting, that will also change. So let's visualize that now. So let's remove that column. Let's go back to our table here. Change cell elements, product name, Based on field value, we'll do the same thing as before. Highlight category, change it to total sales as well. Effects like this. And there we go. So now we are highlighting the products that are dairy in our list here. And if I change what I've selected, confections, condiments, grains and cereals, meat and poultry. It highlights those products, but it doesn't completely filter everything else from this table, which is totally what we want to see. And what's great about this method is that it doesn't just work with tables. You can hook it up with visuals too, like for example, bar charts. So for example, let's change this into, let's say a bar chart like this. 
and perhaps we'll change the the else here instead of white is gray so that we can visualize it in a bar chart we'll change the bars colors to field values instead order by highlight category and there you go so you can see that any meat and poultry products in our list here will also still get highlighted changing context here there we go and that's really it for this video i hope you now know how easy it is for you to use your slicer visual to highlight values in your tables or your charts instead of just using it as filters thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so want to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so i can help you and you can help others if you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.